Hey guys, this is going to be the homework video for 3.1 and it's the chain rule and it's a big lesson. The chain rule is a big deal, okay? <clears throat> and so we're going to go through this really, really slowly with a lot of explanation because there's a lot that you can miss when doing the chain rule. A lot of people miss um, parts of the chain rule when they're first learning how to use it and it's only six questions long, but that's going to take... Uh, a, a while for me to explain these just because I want to make sure that we cover every part of it and I don't want to miss anything and the chain rule there's it's so easy to forget how to uh, to do one of the things okay so looking at question one we have a lot to unpack here we have a function given here and we're trying to find its derivative and I can't just go in and take the derivative of sine take the derivative of that take the derivative of that take the derivative of that Although we are going to do it, but how do you chain them all together? What's the appropriate way to do all that? Okay, and so first of all, you have to think about what is the outermost function, and then you work inside. So you always work outside to inside, the derivative of the outside times by the derivative of the inside. But then even then, there might be more inside functions, which is like what's happening here. So the outermost function, the outermost, uh, outermost operation happening here is this degree 3. In this degree 3, you can treat it as if we had x to the third power. What would I have to do with that? I would have to bring the 3 down and drop the power. But all of this has to stay the same. And after I take the derivative of the outer function, I'm going to have to start working inside to take the derivative of the inside function. And then in the inside function, we have these two functions right here. But inside of those functions, we have more functions that are going to require derivatives. So it's just about piecing this chain together in the correct order. So first of all, I'm going to start with this power of 3. I'm going to drop that down and it's going to become 3. Now all the inside has to remain the same. Okay, so we just took the derivative of the outermost operation, the outermost function. Okay, now I have to look inside of what the function was that I kept the same and now I have to start taking the derivatives of what's inside here and I'm going to start chaining them together. So let's multiply this by the derivative inside. And a lot of times students kind of just go crazy. They, they kind of look at it as such a big picture. But as you just start taking it piece by piece, go step by step, it will make a lot more sense. So let's just start here. Let's start with the derivative of cosine of the square root of x. Well, the outer function is cosine, so let's take the derivative of that. And the derivative of cosine is negative sine. Keep the inside function the same. Okay, so I took the derivative of the outer function here, but now I have to go inside and take the derivative of this function right here, the square root of x. And the derivative of the square root of x is 1 over 2 square root of x. Okay, so again, we had this first derivative, then we had this derivative and that derivative. Okay, let's move along. And so now we have the minus the natural log. Let's take the derivative of the natural log, and then we're going to have to go inside of that. So the derivative of the natural log is 1 over x, but we're going to call that 1 over x squared. We have to keep the inside part as it is. But now we have to go inside and take the derivative of x squared, and the derivative of x squared is 2x. And now we've done everything. So we had the outermost derivative, we had the derivative of cosine, then we had the derivative of uh, the square root of x, then we had the derivative of the natural log, then the derivative of 2x. And it's just a matter of how you chain them all together. Now let's see which of these is the correct options. I don't think it's going to be A. There's not enough written down. But we do have the 3 cosine squared of x minus the natural log of x. Okay, so all of these are the same. And then we have negative sine square root of x. Good. But it needs to be multiplied by 1 over 2 square root of x. So it's not going to be here. So it's got, there you go. So you can see that it's going to be D right here. Because they did not take the derivative of cosine. The derivative of cosine would have been negative sine. And then you can see here that if I simplify that, that's going to simplify to be 2 over x. But So d is going to be our answer there. All right, so question 2. So let f of x equal 5x to the 4th, and we got g of x equal to e to the 2x plus x. h of x is the function defined by the composition of g being put into the function of f. 
which of the following gives the correct expression for h prime? So you can see we have the left side of all this stuff happening here. Which is, so one of these expressions is right. Let's see. These are all different too. So this is saying g prime of x inside. This is saying g of x inside times by g prime of x. And this is 5 to the 4th. So one of these on the left side of the equations is correct. And then, so we'll do both sides. We'll explain why um, it's correct on the left and the right. So, but in any case, so um, let's think about this right here. So if I just take the general rule, so h prime of x of, if, of a derivative of a composition, so we take the derivative of the outside function, which would be the derivative of f, but the inside has to stay the same. And then I go inside and take the derivative of the inside function. So we have the derivative of the outside function, which is f. Inside stays the same, times by the derivative of g prime. Okay? But now we can kind of match everything up. So, um, uh, so I, I want to kind of do this. I'm trying to think of the best way that I want to do this so that we can um, uh, get a full understanding of this. Um, let's also just define h of x right here. So h of x is going to be equal to, we're going to plug g into f right there. And so that's going to look like 5 times by e to the 2x plus x to the fourth. Okay? So if I apply like what I did here, so let's take the derivative of f of x. The derivative of f of x, meaning I would bring the 4 here, and that would make it so h prime of x, that's going to be equal to 20. And then we're going to have e to the 2x plus x. That needs to stay the same, and that's going to be to the third power. So you can see how we took the derivative of f of x right there, the derivative of the outside, and g is going to stay the same, right? But now we have to multiply by the derivative of the inside function. So the derivative of that right there, so times by, well, the derivative of e to the 2x is going to be e to the 2x. But I have to multiply by the derivative of what's inside that function, which is going to be 2. So times by 2, then plus the derivative of x, and that's just going to be 1. Okay, so this is what my function should look like, and that's going to match up with c right here. So we got the 20, we got the inside of the function, which stayed the same, 3, 2 times by e to the x, okay? So that matches up here. But let's look at the left side. So why does the left side look at this look like this right here? So again, we can say that we took the derivative of f, right? And so that brings it down. That makes it 20 to the third. The inside needs to stay the same. So that's what it means right here. This right here is g of x right here. And this right here is g prime of x. So you can see how this matches up with this part right here as well. So 20... This right here is defined as g of x, right, to the third. And then this right here was g prime of x times by g prime of x. So it kind of all matches up with the notation right there. There's a lot going on here. Um, so hopefully that made sense. Okay. Um, number three, let f be the function defined by this right here, where h is the differentiable function. Which of the following is equivalent to the derivative of f with respect to x? So let's start with f of x, uh, f prime of x. So what's the outermost function? That's this sine function, and h of x is inside it. So let's start by taking the derivative of sine, and that's cosine. Remember to keep the inside function as it is, but now we're going to multiply by the derivative of the inside function, which is h prime of x. Okay, so there's a successful derivative using the chain rule. So we've got um, cosine uh, h of x, and then we've got times by h prime of x. So cosine h of x, no derivative though. Uh, cosine h prime of x, no, h prime of x is not inside. It is being multiplied here, and so it's not going to be d either because the derivative of the outside is cosine, so it's got to be c. Okay, so for 4, we've got um, uh, just a chain rule. So the outermost operation here, whenever I'm looking at this, all of this is happening inside of it being raised to the 4th. So this has to require the chain rule first. So I'm going to do the 4. We're going to bring that down here. The inside is going to remain the same. 
Okay, that's going to be dropping down to the third. Now I have to start multiplying by derivatives happening inside. So let's jump inside here, take the derivative of these right here. So derivative of e to the 3x is going to be e to the 3x times by 3 because the derivative of what's inside that one is 3. So that's another chain rule. So we took the derivative of e to the x, also took the derivative of 3x. And then we have plus, and then the derivative of sine is going to be cosine. Keep the inside the same, but now I have to multiply by the derivative of the inside, which is 2. Okay, so now we've completed the chain rule and the chain rules inside the chain rule. So we have 4. I, I don't think it's going to be A because that's far too, there's not enough work there. 4e um, e to the 3x, let's see, we're... Yep, e to the 3x sine of 2. Okay, this one looks good so far. Okay, and then we have e to the 3x. Ooh, they forgot the chain rule here. They didn't multiply by 3, so it's not going to be that one. So 3e to the 3x plus 2, because the 2 is being multiplied, so they got the chain rule there. But it needs to be cosine and not sine, so it's got to be d. Question five. So we've got let f of x equal x to the third and g of x equal x over x minus one. Um, this one, man, I'm seeing quotients. Well, I don't want to jump to any conclusions, but we might need to use the quotient rule here. Um, okay, so if we want to write out h of x, so h of x is going to be equal to, um, so we're plugging g into f. So this is going to be x over x minus 1 raised to the third. Okay, let's go ahead and take the derivative of this right here. So we're going to take that 3. We're going to drop it. So h prime of x is going to be equal to 3. The inside is going to stay the same. And then we're going to decrease the power by 2. But now we have to start multiplying by the derivative of the inside. Now this inside function is a quotient, so it's going to require the quotient rule. So let's just start taking the derivative of this. So we're going to start with low, d high, minus high, d low, and then we're going to square the bottom, and away we go. And hopefully that's all we actually need. So let's actually see if that matches up with anything that we have as our options here. So we've got definitely not going to be this one right here. I'm just looking at the, the right side of the equation. I mean, I can already tell it's got to be C because this is the correct notation for the derivative, right? We drop the 3. It's going to be squared. The inside's going to remain the same. And then we multiply by the derivative of the inside. So this C, it just matches up with the correct notation. So you automatically know that it's got to be it's got to be C. But let's make sure that we have our derivative right. So we got 3 here, x over x minus 1, that's going to be squared. And then we have x minus 1, that's what that's going to be, minus x. Yeah, so matches up with what we have there. Okay. Uh, for 6, let f be the function defined as such. Which of the following is equivalent to the derivative of f with respect to x? So Let's do f prime of x. So we're going to have the derivative of e to the x. And the derivative of e to the x is e to the h of x. But then we have to multiply by the derivative of the inside, which is h prime of x. And so that is going to have to be c. Because we got h prime of x being multiplied, they just switched the product, and that's okay. I don't know why you would, but sure. Okay, and there you go. So it's got to be C. All right. Um, poof. I don't know if that's enough practice. Hmm. I might have to post a, uh, a, I don't know, we'll see what the progress check has, but it's just important to get a lot of practice with the, um, with the, the chain rule. So maybe from the book, I can pull some problems from the book and give you guys some additional problems if you don't feel like you have a, enough practice. But um, hopefully that works for you guys. And yeah.